Seems Rob's like Roundtable. Mike Story. Nico Face. Uh, this is the show that shows. If you ever watch one of them, watch this one. Vegas Odds versus ADP. I compiled a list of four different platforms in terms of ADP. Set them in rankings and also went through all the Vegas props for these guys. Where is Vegas, DraftKings, and FanDuel setting their numbers for yards and touchdowns. It's a great little spreadsheet. We're going to get a lot of insights here. Great for fantasy. Great for betting. Find some inequalities. Find some values. What say you guys? What say you? Guys, you ready? It's been a hot summer for the pod. All three of us have been out here, been getting after it, putting lots of good information out there. It's not too late. We've got draft weekend coming up soon. Y'all can still rewatch the pods, soak up the information, and uh, go wreck your leagues, man. Yeah. Just, uh, just tear them apart. Yeah, I've, I've got one more college fantasy draft, and then okay. I... Okay, uh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> no, no. You come in here with your hot and your heavy, and no. Yeah. All right, let's get into this. Let's quarterbacks right first. In. Quarterbacks first. I'm going to put the spreadsheets up here. I'll just start with this. A couple things really, really jump out to me. It's Lamar Jackson and C.J. Stroud are overvalued, uh, at least in terms of what their Vegas prop is compared to their ADP. Uh, Lamar Jackson is pretty much projected the same, or their Vegas is saying the same as Jaden Daniels. Within 100 yards of each other, yes, he's projected four more passing touchdowns, but the rushing is exactly the same. Actually, Jaden Daniels has projected an extra rushing touchdown. Yeah, this just... This just speaks to how big of a value Jaden Daniels is in fantasy, right? It's rushing quarterbacks, they break fantasy football more often than not. In this case, it looks like if you take a look at where Kyler Murray is as well, 475 is lower than I would have thought. And so I've been hearing, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, you got to get Kyler, got to get Kyler. Kyler is such a... To me, I can skip Kyler. I can get Jaden Daniels a couple rounds later. I'll feel very comfortable with that value. It is, it's, and it's quite a few rounds later, I think, right now. But uh, my take with it is it, Lamar was going to progress as a passer last year, and you saw some of that. And So if he's cutting those yards back down, I think part of it is him stepping forward as a passer. The other part is King Henry is It's got to be, right? And, yeah. right? And, and that's what Vegas is looking at is let's let Henry run the ball. Let's let him take the hits. Let's keep Lamar healthy. Uh, and Lamar, when he gets flustered, has some trouble. And you see him in the playoffs. You see him get flustered. It's when he's not accurate. So let, uh, let King Henry... Henry open up the the run game there and Lamar just sit back and pass and stay comfortable. I mean, four and a half touchdowns, that might even be too high. If you look at yeah. Henry, he's sitting at ten and a half right now. And Lamar so. at 3,250 yards passing, that is super low, dude. That's yeah. too That's low. the same as Anthony Richardson. Is yeah, what I'm saying. I'd, like, I'd bet the over on that. Seven and a half for Anthony Richardson's touchdowns, right. which so feels... They're, they're essentially saying they're projecting the same fantasy year for Lamar and Richardson. Uh, I mean, you look at the uh, the rushing is yeah, lower than... higher rushing yeah, yards yeah. for Lamar. That makes like sense, plus. right? But Richardson Big bo- bigger body, going to be ca- carrying more on the goal line, I would think. At the same time, you have to wonder whether or not that Colts organization is going to try to rein him in. Because when he got hurt, it, w- it tended to be around the five-yard line last year, if you remember that. So, seven and a half seems a little high for me. I don't know that I'll be getting Anthony Richardson anywhere. Right? We saw four games in the last year, and he looked great. But can he do that over a full season? I got a tough time saying with uh, 550 yards rushing. That seems yeah. low. I mean, he should go over that, dude. Should, but 3,200 Passing yards? I don't know. What do you seemingly, think? Seemingly. I, I seemingly. I think Richardson rushing yards are low, and I think uh, Lamar's passing yards are low. I would I would take the over on both of those against Vegas. Uh, do you think that they are overvalued in fantasy, though? I mean, because like we hear all this, all the rushing sheet code. Like This is not – I know it's a lot of injuries are baked in with these guys, and all these props in every position are going to be lower than what we think because they're not projecting – it's not a 17-game projection. True. Especially with a scrambling quarterback. They are – Projecting 13 14 because if you get hurt week five, you automatically lose this bet. Yeah. You know, if you had bet on Anthony Richardson last year, you lose it automatically. Um, next one I want to talk about here is CJ Stroud. Uh, very overvalued based on the Vegas projections here because he's at 4150 passing yards and 28.5 passing touchdowns. And if you look down to the 12 through 14 guys, Brock Purdy, Tua, Jared Goff, they're very similar to that. And those are guys you're getting after the quarterback walks. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand those. It does make me kind of second guess Stroud as the, in this case, you got it six, depending on where you get it, uh, anywhere from five to six. Some people five might take him five. Yeah. Some people will take him ahead of Richardson. The, the, the other question is you look at how much more, how many more passing touchdowns Mahomes has on this list. Are we undervaluing Mahomes? Yes. Right? Yes. Like, should he be number two instead of three? I mean, how, how much can you undervalue the number three guy? Yeah. Right? But, um, yeah, that 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 CJ Stroud one, I, I've got. Now, 
Can, so Tua is literally just the same passing yardage, only three touchdowns less, mm-hmm. which sounds like a lot. Okay, what is it? Uh, Twelve points less, and you know I guess CJ offers a little more on the ground, but he is not. He's not going to get over three hundred yards. Maybe, he's not going to get over three touchdowns. A little bit, yeah. Um, and then uh, you know Brock Purdy, thirty nine hundred twenty eight and a half. Same touchdowns, same over under touchdowns. Brock Purdy, you can get as literally the last quarterback off the board. I mean, if you're going to get a pocket passer, why wouldn't you wait to get? You take Purdy Jared off. You could take Purdy and Jared Goff and, and play the matchups, right? Like right. You get 4,000 yards. That's not that far behind C.J. Stroud. So you had C.J. Stroud, your hot take, as your MVP, quarterback yep. two. Is this making you have some second guessing? Uh, Nico, what are your thoughts on, on C.J. Stroud and just the value you can get later? I wasn't quite as high on Stroud as um, story was. The issue with me is uh, another year of film out there, but you're adding more weapons. You're not taking anything away. You've added Diggs. You've added Mixon. I think a lot of people expect him to do better than he did last year, and if he does just what he did last year, he's going to outperform uh, these numbers. So I get it, but why draft a guy at his ceiling when you can get a, a much higher impact player, wide receiver, running back at that same in that same round where you're taking Stroud and get similar, if not the same production, uh, four or five rounds later? Uh, just wait. Let, uh, let someone else have Stroud. This is one where, I, where I'd go against Vegas, so I still think Stroud is going to throw for far more than 4150. Put your money where your mouth is and bet on it. Yeah, you think uh, I, A couple more things. Uh, Kirk Cousins, they didn't have his yards uh, posted up here. It makes sense. 27 and a half touchdowns up. Dude, that's huge because he's never been a big touchdown guy. He's been a yards guy. I think the expectation is that this offense in general is going to be one of the top third in the league, and so there's plenty of opportunities for that. Um, And Bijan is a pass-catching running back, so you can get dump-off passes from the 10-yard line, and he can run those in. Um, That's what I would guess. Um, Yeah. It's a lot, though. And then Aaron Rodgers uh, at quarterback 20. 36-50 Thirty-six fifty for passing yards and twenty-six and a half touchdowns. That twenty-six and a half, I don't, I don't that's quite huge. understand that. That's yeah, huge. that seems I mean, way too high for me. That's just a homage to the guy, the goat, right? I mean, that's just I a guess. big number, dude. You know, the, 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 his numbers too. are the same I mean, as Jordan. You Lowe. have to take into consideration though that Vegas is trying to uh, project how these guys are going to perform based on how people are going to bet on this too, right? So Aaron Rodgers is a big name, back-to-back MVP candidate, or back-to-back MVP winner a couple years ago. It would make sense that this would get steamed up a little bit. Um, I want to talk about the guy just below Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. This just kind of justifies and and validates my staying far away from him altogether. You look at it. 19 and a half. 19 and a half, 3,300 yards. Sam Darnold is at 19 and a half. <laughs> yeah. what, is, what kind of world are we living in? Like, Is this hand jobs or touchdowns? Because yeah. 19 and a half, and Gardner Minshew is at 18 and a half. That makes sense. Bro. I get that. Minshew mania. Derek <laughs> Carr is higher than him. Daniel if you don't Jones, know, Minshew. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is over it. No, he's yeah, not. Yeah, Daniel Jones, 20 and 16 and a half. Oh, uh, what am I looking at? Will Levis. Will Levis. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I was going to say, if Daniel Jones is ahead of you, pack it up, brother. Done. That's Done. it. Done. Well, all right, so we got to talk about it, though. Caleb Williams, 3,500 yards, 23 and a half touchdowns. As the resident Bears fan, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay, I'm going to hold my opinion on this. I'd love to hear what the 49ers fan has yeah. to say about the presumptive offensive rookie of the year. So the presumptive offensive rookie of the year has looked really good in the preseason game so far on the off-script plays, right? On the, the plays where things break down, he's scrambling, he's running, he's he's looking for the receiver. On the broken plays, those are the intangibles. Those are the things you can't coach. Those are the things that make you the number one pick. The only thing I want to see out of him, and you're not going to know this until you get a few regular season games, is can he stay on script? Can he just drop back, stay in the pocket, make his reads, read the progress, Progressions and hit what he needs to hit because if he can do that, he's going to be the first bear quarterback over 4,000 yards. I don't think he can do that. I don't think so either. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced at this point, and you can't just go off script all day and play back air ball and expect to, to put up massive numbers. Can Hugh Hefner stick to one chip? Like, I don't <laughs> think so, dude. Like, can, why would he? he why would he? He went to the chips. Playboy Mansion, dude. Like, he's 80 years old. He's got these hotties on him. Like, nah, dude, I'm good. I'm good. Yep. All right, let's move on to running backs here. Uh, very interesting. Big crop of guys here. First thing that stands out to me is B. John Robinson, 6.5 rushing touchdowns. Woof. Woof is right. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. <laughs> that's super low, Woof. dude. Com. If you yeah. look all the way down, the only the next person that's tied with him at, at equal or lower is ETN at number 9. Yep. He's 9 at 6.5 as well. This is strictly rushing touchdowns. I though, get that. Right? So who on here would catch more touchdowns? Maybe 
Gibbs. Yeah. Right? Gibbs, maybe, maybe Barkley. Hall, maybe Brees Hall. Maybe Williams. But that's I'm just about saying, it. So dudes, he's the goal line back. So it, it's tough is to. Is he though, or is it going to be apparently Algier? not? We don't Algier's know. See, steal touchdowns. So everybody like thinks that that Algier is strictly a backup, and this is an eighty-five percent opportunity share for Bijan Robinson. We don't know just because Arthur Smith is gone that that's uh, how the Vegas Falcons knows apparently. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, saying, how are they projecting Kirk Cousins for twenty-eight passing touchdowns and Bijan for six and a half rushing touchdowns? That well, seems like a that, riddle. That, no, that makes sense, right? So more but passing touchdowns, fewer rushing. What's more likely to happen? Like, I, I don't know. I don't well, trust Kirk Cousins do, without 30. Does this make you – would you – so where were you with Bijan versus I'm Brees Hall? I'm still Bijan. Okay, and you? I'm conflicted right now because <laughs> yeah. of the competition in Atlanta, and, and I'm nervous with Algier there. I was Bijan, and now I'm starting to lean Hall a little uh, bit. Yeah, me too. Raymond yeah. Allen has showed out for I know he's, he I know he's not Algier. He'll argue differently. But he's only at seven and a half, so we're only looking at one touchdown. Yeah. Both of them are. To be low. honest, at a thousand yards and six to or seven to eight touchdowns, I'm skipping both of these guys. I'm jumping down and to Taylor Gibbs that's and Barkley. What you were talking about when you showed up today. We're yeah. all JT guys, and it's oh. like, it's it's right now in the fantasy community. All I've heard is actually I've heard discussions of Brees Hall and Bijan possibly over CMC. And then you look at this: you got McCaffrey at ten and a half touchdowns rushing, and the crazy receiving work, more rushing yards. And then you have these two guys who are the consensus like mid to early first round picks. They gotta be. They, they're going ahead of CD Lamb sometimes. And you have those low touchdown numbers for RB ones. It starts to put things in the light. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, go I ahead. think I think Hall goes over both of those. If I'm being honest, I think Vegas is wrong. Maybe. I'm, I mean, I'm but gonna stake it, my. I'm gonna put my flag in Hall on that one and, and say his yards and touchdowns are both going to be over that. But there's a. I mean, this kind of speaks to there's a ton of uncertainty about both of these teams, right? Yeah. The, the offensive yeah. line for the Jets has yet to to mesh. You got a quarterback that's over 40 coming off of an Achilles tear. Bijan Robinson, he's in a team that they we expect to take a step forward, but was in the bottom half of the offense last year, and a pretty strong number two back behind him. So for me, like I said, yeah, I mean it's tough though if you're in if you got a draft pick that's two through five and you want to get a solid running back, you're you're rolling the dice that one of Taylor, Gibbs, Barkley, or Henry comes back to you at the end of the second half, right? If you want to try that anchor RB strategy. Yeah, and I don't think they're going to. I think you've got to take your RB if you're that early in the first round. I'm I'm the number four overall pick in my home league, and I'm already that same conundrum. Is yeah. it CD, is it Hill, or is it one of these running backs to make sure I get the the – what is it? Hero running back strategy, anchor running whatever back, you whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. You get one great one, and then uh, you get your receivers from there. I mean, so we all agree, Jonathan Taylor value ten seventy five. Oh my god! Half. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. a value before I saw this, and then looking at the like, he's projected at least rushing wise, and like, okay, Brees Hall, I get he had all the receptions last year, and Bijan's a great receiver, but like, Bijan's not a seventy catch guy. He's a fifty catch guy, and like Jonathan Taylor can be a forty catch guy. So, like, that's not enough to make the difference in my mind when you have Jonathan Taylor with the touchdowns, and he's, we've seen him do it before. All right, Jameer Gibbs, 850 and seven and a half. Granted, he's a receiving back, but that is pretty low. True. Are you off him? That's about what I would expect with Monty there. And then uh, Gibbs being a little banged up already, they're not going to want to just beat him up running through the tackles. Monty is at 850. And nine and a half touchdowns. Now, granted, the receiving work isn't there. The receiving work isn't there. But to me, like, that actually. Makes Gibbs a little more attractive. That seven and a half number makes Gibbs right. a little more attractive in my eyes. I was ex- I would have expected five and a half. Yep. If I was do- handicapping this, so at seven and a half, what does Vegas know that? Again, we talked about it on the other pod. Towards the end of last year, we saw a 50-50 split when it came to drives or series that these running backs had, and if it stays like that, barring the hamstring injury that Gibbs has, you're going to see a much different split, and that kind of makes sense for me. I still wouldn't take Gibbs over Barkley, or Henry, but certainly over Kyron, Kyron, Etienne, Pichette, yeah, any of those guys behind him, right? I know he's he's above those guys, but it makes Gibbs a little more attractive in my eyes. Uh, Devin A. Chain, Vegas not liking him at all. No, seven hundred and fifty yards rushing, dude. They're betting on the health there, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. gotta be. I mean, it's the seven be. and a half rushing touchdowns is crazy. He it's was like, banged up in training camp last year. He was out for four games. He was on the pup. That. Is is this alarming to you guys? Mm, like, it, this feels like Vegas covering their bases here, where they fully expect that Devon A. Chan is going to miss two or three or four no, games. It's like five or six but games. Because does, does, this guy can do that in freaking 10 games. Does A. Chan make up enough in the receiving game to be 11, 12 spots higher than Mostert, who's going to put up the same rushing numbers according to Vegas? 
Uh, six seventy-five right. versus seven fifty. That's a man. that's a decent gap. The I'll touchdown. wait on Mostert if I don't think Achan is going to be a We're massive receiver right, back there. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not willing to. I mean, we don't have the receiving numbers here, but I'm not willing to miss on the upside of Achan in in every league. Like I get where you're coming from. Mostert has a touchdown opportunity, an upside, but me, I, I want what Achan brings to the table. There's also injury concern with Mostert, right? Like, he had a, a fully healthy year last year, but every year prior to that, he missed at least one game. Uh, usually, like, five games. Yeah. That's why I said at and least one coaching game. coaching decisions, not, you know, putting, not dressing the guy. Coaching decisions. Uh, how, about, uh, how about Kamara? 625 and uh, four and a half. With all the information uh, coming out about um, the rookie, or the last year's Kendrick rookie. Miller's yeah, Kendrick Miller. He's in the doghouse. He's yeah. hurt. You got Jamal Williams, who's a dinosaur. Uh, you got Taysom Hill, apparently. Right. That's like, that's where I'm at. I, so last week's preseason game was uh, Saints Niners, so I watched that one obviously, and uh, they loaded Taysom Hill with some work yeah. and uh, quarterback sneaks and run plays, and I think it's a, a combination of you can't write Miller off yet. He may be in the doghouse, but he's young, right? Second year player, and he's I think going to get his opportunity. Williams, you saw get how many touchdowns a few years ago before he came to New Orleans, and I think Vegas is kind of baking all that in as to the different running backs there as well as how many touchdowns is New Orleans going to score? It's a good question and I'm high on Olave so a lot through the air I think with Carr. That that makes me cool on Kamara and kind of rise on Taysom Hill a little bit. That that I think you're right Nick. Well that's what they're baking in there and it's the same thing with Ramondre Stevenson. I'm worried about that four and a half touchdown number. Very low. Right? What, what does that mean for Antonio Gibson? There's a world where that's the lowest scoring offense in the league and that's, I, think, I think that's, that's what a, Vegas is yeah. telling us. I think it's Stevenson. more than a world. It's If you're looking at the multiverse that's been happening in more worlds than not. That's too low though. Come on. He's going he's gonna to walk into some touchdowns. Right? He has to. Right? Like he's he's huge. But, he caught but, a few passes last year too. Now that Zeke's out of there, I know Gibson's the pass catching back, but Stevenson's uh, not uh, not averse to catching passes either. So no, but it does make me cool on him. And you look at Connor at seven seventy five and six and a half. I'm gonna bump him up on my rankings a little bit, right? That's, he that's a nice number. Yeah, that, that's and that's also here, yeah. like factoring in it's James Connor. Like they're already factoring in the three to the four games. games three to four games. Yeah. They're already saying he's gonna do that. So. Uh, Kenneth Walker, your boy, he's a tiny dancer. <laughs> he is seven and a half touchdowns rushing, eight seventy five with a little bit of receiving work. Probably undervalued where you I, know, he's, he's he's got better numbers than Joe Mixon on here in Vegas. And I would take 16. Mixon over Walker. Right? I don't know. Would you take Mixon or I think, Walker? I think Seattle's a more run heavy team than uh than what Houston's gonna be this year. They don't score any touchdowns apparently according to the story. <laughs> nope. Uh, and at this at this point I'd take the better offense and Mixon. I'd rather have the player on the better offense if that's the tiebreaker for me. Yeah, I'm still mixing, but I am kind of I'm cooling on my hate on Walker in that situation. <laughs> if Vegas has it for seven and a half and eight seventy five, that I mean, they're thinking that there's a poss- there's a possibility that that offense could be halfway decent. It's I'm I'm interested though because Rashad White is lower touchdown total, lower res- or rushing yardage. Now we know he's a true pass catching it's back. All the pass catching, yeah. yeah. And that's what it is for Kamara too. Like you said, you're cool. Yeah, the Kamara, low, Kamara are really but low. Dude. I don't anticipate that from him in the rushing game anyway. Six twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, but that's 90, like 40 I'll take ninety yards a catches. game, bro. Well, there's but there's no way he's gonna be on the field that much getting those catches have 625 yards rushing. So they're projecting not a lot of workload, not a lot of snaps. Yeah, or not a lot of offense. I mean, we are we are undervaluing Najee Harris. Yeah, based I was, on this, I, like, I have him starred right here, yeah. 850 and five and a half. And this was like, I doubt they've adjusted for the injury. Nah, the, they probably the Jalen yeah, Ward. Was, you think it went injury. up? I mean, yeah, it's only been I, a week. I think they bumped him up. I think they would have. 850 and five and a half is nice. Um, and if it usually it takes wife. Vegas half a day to a day to adjust to, to news like that. So, okay. yeah, I would say that's fully baked in. And 850 and five and a half, like at RB, what are we at here? RB 24 on right now and half PPR, like that. Yeah. I would just like to point out, man of the the pod, Zach Moss, seven hundred and six and a half. No, no, no. Down yeah, down 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 Zach Moss, baby. <laughs> Where's I'm Chase Brown? <laughs> Chase Brown not even listed. I, They're projecting out. him for zero yards and zero touchdowns. <laughs> I want to point out Devin Singletary at thirty. He's got the same numbers. My boy Zamir White. Yeah, that's a little rough. scary. That's, rough. that's um, yikes. That's scary the, for how, White. How are the touchdowns the same? I mean, the Giants aren't as bad as the 
as the Raiders, right? They don't expect them to score a lot of touchdowns. Apparently. All right, this is awesome, man. Hope you enjoyed the knowledge. Thank thank Rob for all this awesome prep that I do. Thank you, Rob. Rob, the host with the most. We learned a lot, together. I learned a lot. The man's got some allergies kicking his ass. I'm, I'm, He's I'm, not.